strong reasons we've had uh, recently that we continue to see with new uh, customers. So today's session, we're going to uh, I'll give you a brief introduction about Alliance and then Sage as the company and then a little bit about Sage 300 Construction Real Estate. Uh, we'll give you an overview of these five reasons that we've talked about and then I'll, I'll walk you into the software and we'll take a look at those reasons um, from right within the software. Just a little housekeeping. If you have any questions, um, on the right-hand side of your screen, there's an area where you can go in and type in a chat. Uh, we've got a couple folks that are monitoring the chat, so you can type your questions in there and we'll answer them at the end, uh, at the end of the session as well. We'll just open things up. If you've got any questions, um, you can just uh, do them at that time as well. And we'll try to make this as quick as possible and keep, our, keep under our time. So Alliance Solutions Group is a distributor. Uh, for software, um, our main our main provider of software is Sage, uh, but we do work with systems that work around the Sage environment. Um, we're going to look at Sage 300 Construction Real Estate today. We also work with Sage 100 Contractor. Uh, we work with Sage Estimating. Um, we have folks in our group that specialize in that estimating digital takeoff BIM world. So if you are at a point where you have a need for that side of the technology where you're looking for building information modeling or digital takeoff or you want to connect your estimating system to your accounting system, uh, absolutely have that capability available. Um, we work within mobile area as well. It seems to be a hot market right now. And we have mobile project management. We have bid solicitation. We've got work order capabilities, uh, time capture. All those are things that we see in the mobile world. Um, we have a group that specializes in human resources. So if you uh, have typically 100 employees or more and you are working through onboarding and benefit selection and reviews and all the things that happen with larger um, organization, we have software that specializes in that. We've got quite a few clients in the production home building world, so we work with that. And then um, Alliance also does custom development for clients that need applets or may have some specialized needs that uh, work with their Sage products. And then we have a division that does hosting. Uh, we're seeing more clients that want to move away from the technology stack in their office. They're looking for help, have someone find them, the hosting environment, help everything get spun up, all their data moved over, and uh, we have several people in the organization that specialize in that. Um, on the right, it's a little dated, Sage Partner of the Year. Uh, we've been the Partner of the Year for construction and real estate probably nine of the last ten years been uh, Sage Partner of the Year for North America probably for the last six years and last year we were the Sage Partner of the Year um, Global. So we were their number one business partner across the world for both number of new clients and revenue to uh, Sage. We specialize um, in the southern part of the country. We've got offices in Florida, Texas, and California and then we've got employees and resources across the southern band of the of the US. Um, we also have clients in the Caribbean and we've got them in Mexico and uh, some other areas, but this is where our main focus is based on the air, the offices in blue. Close to 7,000 active clients uh, that we are working with now. We like Sage because it is a big company. We don't have to worry about working with a software developer that's three guys in a garage or two guys in a truck and a dog. We really want someone that's of size, that has some uh, power behind them, that has money to do development, keep products current, keep up with technology. And Sage is that type of company. They have six million customers worldwide, two and a half in North America, and then uh, they have over 3,000 business partners like ourselves. So there is a, a huge push from the Sage and, uh, world in software. Our main part of Sage is the construction real estate division that's based here in uh, on the West Coast. They are in Beaverton, Oregon, I believe. Last time I checked, they had uh, over 400 employees. When you look at all of the products that Sage offers that work within construction real estate, there's over 50,000 firms that are utilizing a Sage product and they're bringing on two new construction customers per hour. So it's a it's a strong environment um, as companies are falling away or being bought by other companies and you, all that consolidation that's going on. The one thing that seems to be current is Sage is around. They've got distributors. They have local resources. They've got products that will fit within the construction and real estate world. 
The software stage offers covers basic areas, estimating, finance, construction, accounting, project management, field, mobile apps, service, and property management. So it's a, it's a large swath of applications, but focused on a specific set and specific industries uh, that we work um, through. We're going to look at Sage 300 today, uh, and the, our reasons are driven around that. The application is a licensed software, so you can load it on your servers, you can load it up in the cloud. You own the product, you're paying an annual maintenance and support fee for updates and new enhancements and new versions. Um, it is accounting, project management, service, mobile, full property management is available. It has the imaging, well, I'll show you a little bit about my system today, and then because it has been around forever, there are dozens of third-party applications that have written interfaces to the Sage 300 solution. And so the five reasons we came up with just looking at um, recent purchases and recent client feedback is uh, we see people looking for software that utilizes or has a great MS you know, office integration. They want to get data to Word or Excel. They want to be able to utilize Outlook um, with their software. And so I'll walk you through several scenarios that are around that. We also offer um, cloud-based software. Uh, Sage is kind of unique. They were focusing their development efforts around operation software. So when we're looking at project management and bid management and service management and work orders, there are op applications that are available today that work with their Sage accounting project cost accounting system. We'll look at a few of those. We also have uh, kind of a unique set of reporting tools and re inquiry that are revolve around one scenario today we're going to talk about um, job costing but we've got some great tools for reporting that we'll look at and then for our um, clients that worry about subcontractor compliance we uh, will take a quick look at the job cost or the subcontractor compliance management system it's making sure that we've got documents together uh, protecting our rights uh, as we go through and manage projects and then finally we're seeing an uptick in larger companies that are managing our own multiple companies or multiple divisions or departments and they need an ability to handle intercompany accounting as well as consolidated financials. So I want to be able to combine my divisions or departments in different ways, potentially have partners and be able to provide partner reporting. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out uh, and start real quick here. First thing I just want to show you is Sage 300. And Sage 300 utilizes a desktop approach. Um, when a user logs in with their username and password, they're picking a data folder that has multiple entities with it, within it that are um, related. You can keep multiple data folders that are different, that have different combinations of um, companies. So in this one I'm in, it's called Timberline Construction. It's made up of four different companies. In those companies, um, I'm running different types of businesses. And so when I log in, I see the uh, modules that I have access to based on my security. And then I also see home pages on the right. And so this is just a subset of the modules. So as we go through this, we'll probably dig in a couple modules here. We'll look at general ledger or financial statements. And we may look at project management or service management. But it's, it can be a large number. We also give you the ability by individual to build a sub ledger or subset of this. So I can say, hey, I'll, I only want to see my favorites, and those favorites can be reports, or they can be resources, or they can be queries. Whatever they happen to be, we can use this to make a more manageable menu for uh, employees. And sometimes employees will start with favorites and move their way back to applications um, as they get to feel more comfortable with the system. Most of the menus work the same way. I click on Accounts Payable. It takes me in and shows me what are my options. I have tasks and setup and reports and tools. If I were going to accounts receivable, same idea, tasks, setup, reports, and tools. When we look at tasks, these are the things that we can do within accounts payable, like enter invoices or change them or print checks or generate electronic payments or go look at compliance or government reporting. If we go back into setup, this is where I can define things like credit cards and recurring um, invoices. We've got inquiries to look at data. We've got reports to print or uh, export data. And then we always have tools. Kind of a unique ability within the system is if we uh, typically have an ability to import something, there's an ability to import it. So 
if I have an ability to, to enter invoices, I'd have an ability to import invoices. If I have an ability in GL to enter uh, journal entries, chances are I'll have an ability to import those same journal entries. If we're going into job costs and I have an ability to enter budgets or direct costs or commitments or worksheets, typically I'll have that same ability to go import um, into that area as well. And that's one of those tools that we find where operation software that isn't doing accounting needs to get data in or out. SAGE 300 becomes a really nice uh, capability for that. On the right is a home page. Home page are where we can um, look at data. I've got three of them identified on my login. There are probably 30 that come with the system. You can modify home pages or you can design your own or you can have your local business partner like Alliance design them for you. First one I have is a project manager. The idea is I can select a job and then the job homepage will provide me information that's reading it real time. So I can show me profit on the job, it can show me cash flow and billing on the job and contract status on the job and cost control. The blue hyperlinks will take me to more information. So if I want to look at this job and I'm interested in seeing what my budget was on the job and then how I have commitments and costs and where I am on my buyout, I can go there. If I wanted to see where my billing is on the job, I can jump over to the schedule of values and the contract that and the bill to date and cash receipts and if I'm interested in seeing my subcontract logs, I can show you for the job each subcontract and the status of the subcontract, including any change orders or invoices or checks. So it's a, it's a nice way to look at the specific data based on the user, which in this case is a project manager. If I were to go to a controller, interested in a different set of data. Still may be interested in some things about jobs, but more likely about the financial health of the company. So I can start to look at AP agings and AR agings or look at balances of things that are in the system, but still have an ability to drill down. So if I want to see what's going on across all jobs, I can see my receivables across all jobs. Or if I want to look at a profit summary, I can see that across all jobs. If I move over to the owner perspective, similar information, but now we've moved up a level and an owner is really looking at an overview of all jobs or billings or commitments or budgets. They may want to see a summary of all of my contracts now. So I can start to see contract and billing and payments and cash flow and for profits and margins and all that from a very high level. And so each of these links is going to give me a look at different things that are going on within the system. And so this is a good starting point. Most people log in, then they start deciding where do they want to go, what do they want to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first uh, some of the MS Office integration. So first place I'm going to go is an, into a module, and I'm going to look at an inquiry. And the idea with an inquiry is um, it's a capability to get data out of the system. Uh, it's an interactive tool. So this is an inquiry about my projects. Uh, and as you'll see, it's got my project information, and I've got columns that show me data, in this case contract value, and budgets, and commitments, and cost, and billing, since it's all type of information I may need. As I look across the header, we can see that I have an ability to see if I have attachments, any documents that are there. I can start to change orders and use sorts. Um, we also give you the ability to drill down. So if you double click on a column, in this case estimate, it will drill me down and show me the estimate for the job. Or if I double click on commitments, it will take me down and show me uh, all of the commitments on the job. If I'm in a screen like this one, the interface we look to for um, Microsoft or Excel is the Excel button. So if I click the Excel button, the software will take everything on the grid and it will download it into an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. So now I've taken that information, I pulled it right into Excel. And the, the beauty of this is uh, many people will use this as an ad hoc reporting tool because it gives me an ability to go into the existing spreadsheet and start to pull other information in here. So if I wanted to modify the data to get things like you know type and size, I can start to pull more data that I might need or that's more that's relevant to me, and then I can um, take this and then download it into Excel, and then based on my download, I have raw data in Excel that I can start to manipulate. It's just a quick, easy, ad hoc capability to bring data into Excel. So from a from a query perspective, any query can be pulled right down. 
if we were to go into a report, reports are more driven around paper, but let's just say I wanted to take, um, I'm going to go into subcontract control, and I want to see a report that's got full detail. And as I go to select a report to run, the software will ask me, what do I want to see? Um, in this case, it's showing me a log. If I want to take this report now, and I want to send it to Outlook, if I hit the send button and I use Outlook internally, the software will generate an email and it will attach a PDF of the report that I'm just there. If I want to take this report and bring it into an Excel template or I want to pull it in somewhere else, it, the software gives me an ability to tell it I'm going to send it to a file and then to determine what type of file. So do I want to send it to an XLS file, a workbook, do I want to put it in Adobe, do I want to make it a, an HTML format, all that can be driven right from this. And we're driving the data now from a report as we go. Very easy to drop it into Excel as, as we get. These have been around for years, and we've had clients that have many times said, that's great, I get it to the data, but I really want something with more um, ability to predefine what the data looks like when I get it over in Excel. So to accomplish that, we actually have a couple options. Um, we have a tool called Office Connector, and, and the idea is I can design my spreadsheets in Office Connector. And Office Connector will go reach into Sage 300 and pull the data down to a predefined template. So in this case, I'm going to pull, do a cost to complete. And what you'll find is I, it opens up my spreadsheet, and then as I look at this, I can define what I want to bring. So I'm just going to say from here, I know I want to bring in this job. And so what it will do now is that it's connecting to my Sage 300, and it will go out and it will pull down the data from Sage 300 into my worksheet. And so now this data is as current as when I initiated the spreadsheet. Uh, and inside our Office Connector world, we actually offer um, different tools that are available, and these are predefined queries that are in here. You can build your own, but if you wanted something around cash flow analysis or if we had things like WIP reports that would, were easier for us to manipulate in Excel, we'd use a tool like this to bring that data out into Excel in a format that makes sense to you. Um, and it just changes your orientation when we are designing in Excel and extracting the data. We've also built a tool that um, is called My Assistant. And the My Assistant component is where we've taken a little bit of a different spin where we want the software to deliver the report to the employee or the organization or the resource, but I want the report to be an Excel spreadsheet. And so in this case, we can define an Excel spreadsheet that will come out as a report and it's delivered to the end user. And as an example, this cost to complete worksheet, my forecast worksheet, is generated out of my assistant. It's sent to resources within the organization. And the byproduct of it is a, of an, an active Excel spreadsheet. So the idea with this is it shows up to a project person. There, These first columns, A through H, are as current as when the software ran the report and emailed it. And it's an, it's an automatic capability as well. So I can deliver this report on a recurring basis, like the 25th day of every month, or I can have it run on every Friday or every Monday. But the report will show up in Excel. And then it also uh, has an ability for us or you to develop downstream calculations. So if up till H is um, data that comes right out of Sage 300. But as I start to enter information, I'm going to enter information in I. And then I've told the system that J, K, and L are going to be calculated fields. So it's giving you the kind of the best of both worlds. We're downloading the data into an active worksheet. We're delivering it to somebody in the organization with an ability to manipulate the data. I don't need a connection to the database. I'm just using this as a tool to get data to an end user. Um, and we've got dozens of these that are available to be delivered. And different ones will look different ways. There's an example of one that was delivered as a billing worksheet. Same kind of idea. I want to send it out. I want people to be able to look at data around contracts and billings and percentages and be able to fill it out, send it back into the office so that we maybe we use that for billing purposes. And so those are kind of the high-level areas that we see um, our Microsoft Office um, integration is Excel, Word, um, email, 
and we do it different ways depending on who the person is that's responsible. Um, kind of the final one is we have a system called um, My Assistant. It's a warning tool. The software is actually monitoring data within your uh, organization. And so if you have told the software that you are wa you're monitoring vendors that have insurance expiration, the software will actually send to my Outlook a group of those warnings. It's just telling me what vendors have insurance that's expiring. Or it might show me invoices that are over a certain size or a threshold and that I, I want to be concerned about. Or I want to see my jobs that are over budget. Or I want to see uh, committed costs. I got jobs where committed costs are greater than the estimate or cost codes are greater than the estimate. These are things like I can say this job on that activity I budgeted $3,200. I've got purchase orders of 8850 and is that's a problem. I, I may get this as a controller in Outlook and if from here I can do a couple things. I can start to forward this information to other people in the organization. I can ask for tasks so I'm I'm utilizing Outlook to really manipulate this data. So I'm going to go ahead and forward those two items to somebody else in the organization. And I'm going to say, can you explain, please? And then this is going to actually send the email. Um, and then what happens within the this tool is if we were to connect this item, you can see that it keeps track of the email I sent associated with the record within uh, Sage 300. And as if Dennis were to respond to me, when that email were to come in, it would come into Outlook. I could look at the email, and the software would automatically log his response and tie it back to the individual line items within um, Sage um, 300. And so this also works as an active tool. So if we come through and someone goes in and adjusts the estimate or revises the commitment and it resolves this issue, if you were to hit say, update Sage, it will go back and it pulls in all the raw data. So it's a it's an active query tool as well, as well as a warning system. And if there are things that, that don't bother you, you can come to here and say, you know what, I want to go ahead and mark that complete. And so that just tells the software it's not an issue for me anymore. Ignore it. So utilizing Outlook and utilizing our warning system is a way that you can kind of keep an idea of what's going on. Do it all with an Outlook. Spin off meeting requests. Keep track of what's happening all from within your Outlook world. <clears throat> so those are the main ways we are looking to go uh, in, and get into Microsoft Office. Um, from the cloud-based software perspective, I'm just going to pop into a couple of them here. Um, first one I want to look at is going to, I'm going to go to Sage Project Center. <clears throat> it is a web-based project management system where I can come in and select a project that I have. Um, I'm in the cloud. This is connected to my back office servers for accounting. It's allowing project managers actually a, an ability from a dashboard or from their iPad or from a browser to go in and start to look at information. So I've selected a project. That project is in my accounting system. I'm out in the field. I can start to look at information around events. I can look at cost management information. So my contract and change orders and any commitments that are going on, I can start to document using document control. So if I have RFIs or change orders or submittals or punch lists, all those are available. I can also come in and start to look at things like reports. So we're utilizing the back office accounting data and we're also utilizing the data that's within our web-based project management system. And to give you an idea, I'm just going to say for this job, let's go look at the contract. And there's, there's actually Dennis who just responded to me um, and said he's going to take care of it for me. If I were to go back into my Outlook and go back to that area where we wanted to see what was going on and I selected that item, you can see that Dennis's email is now connected back to the item in my database. So I can start to see exactly what's happening, who's doing what, what was my communication. The communications are being done in Outlook. The tracking is being done uh, back and forth through a normal um, processing. And, and Dennis in this world is not part of my organization. Uh, he's just sending me a note back from his own world, so I'm keeping track of internal and external. So let's go back to uh, project management. So I've just basically said I want to see what's going on with my job. And so the first tab is just showing me what my estimate is. The estimate is here is the same estimate that's sitting in your accounting system. We're reading those real time. Uh, we can look at the contract. The contract's going to be my, my schedule of values. 
we're reading those from the accounting system. If I go look at a summary, we'll give you a dashboard, a project manager can see to see exactly where we are with estimate and changes and costs and what's going on within my, my project very quickly. Or we can break it down and take a little closer look. So the software's moving us into different areas, um, all driven around a simple orientation web page. I want to make it simple, I want to make a look at it. Also have a bid package, a bid capability. The idea there is if you're doing invitation to bid, we can utilize this to go out and look to see if we've got any bid packages out there. And am I sending bids out there? So I do have an organization and inside my organization, I'm looking at delivering a set of bid packages. And then I've broken it down into different areas in the system. And within those areas of the system, I can send out multiple um, requests for quotes. And I can keep track of by company, have I sent them an invitation to bid? Have they actually responded with a response? And it's a uh, collaborative environment, so the email that they re receive from us will give them an option to say, I'm, I am going to respond, I'm not going to respond, I might respond. From that email, it's going to connect back here. We keep track of all the bidder statuses that are out there. We can put addendums on each one of these. We can have options and preferences. We give them an ability to order prints from this. You can download the prints or the files and you, we pull them right into an index on-screen takeoff file if you want. So this is all managing that collaborative um, invitation to bid from our web-based project management system. I'm gonna jump over and use a different look. I'm gonna look at our Sage service operations. So a little bit different. Now we're looking at work orders. Wanna be able to log in want to see what's going on. A couple things here. I'm, I want to be able to see, in this case, I have a dashboard. The dashboard is user-defined. It will identify from, on our world, work orders, invoices, outstanding work that we've done, things that are open, open work orders, work orders need to be built. So it's reading our work orders from our service system and putting it in an area where a dispatcher can come look and see, okay, what's going on today? Let me look at all my work orders. Let me drag and drop my work orders and assign them to either a group of employees, a set of subcontractors, pieces of equipment, whatever we need. And we're giving you ability to either schedule your work orders, but we also can work in this world where I can grab a job and utilize the same set of employees. And then those employees then can be based on the job. So if we come in here and see if I got a job in here, 03. There's my job right there. I can grab, grab tasks and drag them over to employee. And so inside the scheduling system, it allows us to really look at scheduling resources that are both service resources, construction resources. I can show you all the resources based on different times. So show me what I have over the next two weeks or what do I have over this week or what do I have today by hour. And so now I can start to get a really good understanding of what I have available and what my resource leveling needs to work. Um, this also gives us an ability to send salespeople out to do quotes, and those quotes can come back and become work orders. We can, those work orders can become invoices, and we can start to work through a mobile environment, all connected back to our um, Sage 300 construction and real estate. So that's a really quick high-level look at some of the cloud-based applications um, that we are looking at. Um, when we look at reporting and inquiries and job costing, within this system, you really get to define what your job cost structure looks like. It's, it's one of its strengths. Job cost can be really simple. I just want a job and an activity. Or it can get more complex where I can break my job down into multiple sections and I can have sub-jobs and I can have cost codes with sections. And you really get to define what is important to you. And once you get to that decision of what we want, we start looking at dashboards and reports, and delivering reports through my assistant, or delivering them as Excel, or delivering them as a PDF, and delivering them on time, or delivering them on a recurring basis. All of that reporting is all driven off of our costing system. The costing system is the heart of this. It really lets me take any report that we've got out in the software and then deliver those any way we want. So we have hundreds of reports. And so as I start to look at things like labor control, I can define these reports to be on the dashboard. Um, I can show it as a recurring report. I can deliver it on a time basis. I can deliver it with PDF. I can deliver it with Word. I can deliver it in Excel if we want or Outlook. 
you get to decide what those reports are, how they're delivered, when they're delivered, and who they're delivered to. Go a little bit further here, we're looking at subcontract compliance. Um, this is something that's important for many of our um, general contractors and developer clients. And the idea with that is uh, if, if we were to go into accounts payable quickly and say, um, what are we looking at? We've got subcontract compliance. And I'll show you what the compliance tool looks like. I'll show you a couple reports and I'll show you how the uh, end user experiences it. But ultimately, what we're doing within this world is we're trying to keep track of issues of compliance on a project or issues of compliance on a subcontract or issues of compliance on a job and a vendor or a subcontractor. The things we worry about are lien waivers and then if we're working on a government job and my subs need to provide me certified reporting, um, if we have insurance, we're worried about insurance that's on a specific project or insurance that's on a specific vendor, and then there may be miscellaneous items that we're worried about. And those miscellaneous items can be things like um, drug tests that we want. So we're giving you an ability to define those items, and then the system is automatically logging items, and it's showing me where I've got, in this case, I'm looking at lien waivers, I've got for a vendor and a subcontract, I've got a partial that's out there, it's a primary, I can show you if there's any secondary vendors, what invoice it was associated with, if we cut a check to pay it, what check it was coming from, and then what was the amount, and when did we issue it, and what was it good through, and then did we get it received back. So we're updating all this information as a process through our normal day of managing subcontracts and entering AP invoices and logging compliance documents that come in. To facilitate this, we are usually find in modules that are compliance oriented, if I were to look I can usually find compliance reports. In this case, we can come out and say, hey, I just want to see a, a subcontractor snapshot. And the software is going to then ask me, what subcontractor am I looking for? It usually will give me a couple options. In this case, I can say I want to look at this vendor or a job. I'm just going to look at a vendor. And this will take a second. This is reading through all of the compliance entries associated with projects, subcontracts, change orders, and invoices and it's showing me that for A1 Electric from the vendor perspective we've got some insurance that's out there and I can show you then for that vendors working on this job and then on the job they've got some things were outstanding we've got a drug test and a document I'm waiting on and I can show you different lien waivers that are outstanding <clears throat> under that job we can jump down into a subcontract and look at the compliance associated with the subcontract so now we can start to show job by job, and then within each job, if there are multiple subcontracts that are associated with it, we can show you the compliance that are going on here. And so what this does is it eliminates the need to do all of that with sticky notes and files and pieces of paper and trying to determine what are all the compliance issues that are out there and needed. Um, how an end user would experience that um, de really depends on how you've set it up and at what level we're concerned. But if we're going to go through, and I'll just enter an AP invoice quickly. If I enter an AP invoice, I select that same vendor. The software tells me, just like it showed on the report, we've got some compliance issues out here. And it shows me that I've got four insurance certificates that are out of compliance. I can look at the details to see what those certificates are. I can jump over to the compliance management program we just looked at, or I can just say ignore it. And so I'll go ahead and put in an invoice and we'll say it's 456 bucks and so I'm going to go down now. If I were to select a subcontract, the software is going to, in this case, tell me I've got it on hold, but it will tell me now that I have compliance that this vendor on this job and this PO, I've got two miscellaneous items and I've got five lien waivers outstanding. So software is letting me ignore this as I go along, but I just can move through now, you don't have to worry about that. Um, and I can say I want to make $2,500 here. And then I can move, it tells my retainage and I move along. So as we are entering the data, what you'll find is it's interactively looking at the combination of data that were there. And it's giving me feedback as to what the problem might be. At this point, I could put this invoice on hold if I wanted. If I knew I needed to resolve something with a joint check, I could do that as well. On the bottom right down here, it's giving me access to what the status is of this in this case, the commitment that I'm sitting on had was 82,000. We've been invoiced this amount. There's where the balance is. So 
interactively, it's reading all of the compliance items and it's giving the warnings to uh, the end user that's monitoring this. So they're going to get those warnings. We also log all those warnings so later someone could go back and say, hey, what warnings did the end user get and what, what did they see? So it's really designed to help us manage subcontractors and utilize the data that's in the accounting system, payables, invoices, insurance, all those things that are out there, and have those come back and, and look at those. The final thing we've had people interested in lately is this intercompany accounting and consolidated financials, um, the idea there. So as we are building into the general ledger, um, actually, we can start to show you um, the GL number can be between one and 25 digits, and it can have between one and five sections. And as you, you build your sections, the software will let you build a GL structure. In this case, <clears throat> I've decided on a really simple structure where I have four companies. I've got a general contracting firm. <clears throat> I've got a joint venture. I own equipment. And when I look at this company, I can start to determine um, what are the intercompany accounts that we may want to use. So if I enter an invoice and I code the invoice to two of the three companies and I pay the invoice out of the fourth company, the software will develop intercompany payables and receivables so we can manage exactly what's happening within those entities that are there. It lets me define by company different year-end dates and month-end dates. I can have different calendars, 12 or 13 period calendars. I can define partners in each company and I can start to manage that as we go along. <clears throat> So every company is going to have its own little world. When we set up jobs, as an example, one of the things the system will ask me is, okay, for that job, who's the company? What company owns this job? So now, even though I may have an AP clerk that is entering data, and I'm just going to go to the GL, let's go pick a job real quick, and we'll go look at the GL settings. In the GL settings, it's asking me, what company owns this job? And so you may have multiple companies and then multiple jobs and the jobs are mapped back to the companies and so an AP clerk can be entering data in one entry screen and just selecting the job and under the covers the software is managing where all the GL accounts are, how, where all the transactions are happening, not by this, the end user understanding the company structure, it's the end user just has to either select the correct company and then off that goes so we can build that in there. So I build my set of companies <clears throat> And then the companies have accounts. And then really what we end up with is a chart of accounts for this entity that shows companies and then the GL account. So as I move through here, we can see each company <clears throat> has different ways of looking at all those GL accounts. And so we build the GL accounts. GL accounts are linked. We've got intercompany accounting. Um, when I go to run my financial statements, what you'll typically find is when I go to print the report and I say I want to run a financial statement, the software is going to give me an option of running groups, which are you know uh, multiple statements together, or it will let me print multiple statements. So if I wanted to print an income statement, we give you the ability to build prefix groups. And a prefix group for us is a grouping of entities. So in this case, if I say a consolidated statement, it's all of my entities combined together under one statement. Uh, so I just show one statement, all four. If I get individual company statements, it's a statement that has an individual for each one. So I'm really getting four statements together. I'm running them. And then we give you the ability to build in whatever combination you want. So in this case, I have one that's just saying, just show me company 10 and 21 together. Or you could do 21 by itself or 21 and 22 or any combination based on how we've defined the individual structure within our GL. So if I select that, software is going to go out and it will provide me a statement for company 10 as I move along company 21, and so we can get those now in whatever format we want. Very simple and easy. The big thing is that when we define the GL, it's to define how I want to see my GL number and how those entities are supported. And for us, an entity can be a company, a division, a department. And so now when, if we get into a more complex environments, so I can have a company that does new construction and service or it does service and installation, however we want to look at it. And then as I start to manage transactions, the general ledger is accumulating those and rolling them up based on the hierarchy we've determined. And then I can start to slice and dice the data based on whatever format makes sense. I can drive that report into Excel. 
If I want, if it's better there, I can design that report in Excel. I can deliver that report in Excel. You get to decide which ones make sense for you. Um, and that's one of the real strengths if you have multi-entity. Uh, most construction systems don't understand multi-entities and intercompany com, com, um, accounting. And this one, because we are a property management system as well, we have very sophisticated general ledger capabilities to support the property management environment. Uh, in construction, we just get to take advantage of that in some cases. Uh, so let's go back here real quick. Um, so we looked at intercompany. So we're at about 45 minutes. That gives us some time for questions. So what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to look to see if we've got any questions in here from our notes. Doesn't look like we have any questions. Uh, Nick's and um, Tim are online. So first off, I'd like to say thanks for spending the time with us, taking a quick look at Sage 300. If you have any questions, um, you can call us. Our number is 888-559-9540. Uh, 